Hello, hello. I hope you have all had a wonderful week so far. Um, I had a really good week this week. I think I've turned a mental corner and I have finally found uh, my mojo again. And uh, I think I must have just settled into a routine for working from home and just being at home all the time. Anyway, so today um, I am filming a slightly different video to normal. I have been asked by quite a few people recently about uh, scented candles and I burn candles all the time. I, even when I'm not in isolation, I work from home at least sort of one or two days a week. And so I often will burn candles uh, while I'm working and I burn candles whenever I'm home. So um, I've had a lot of people kind of asking me recently and I suppose it's because now everybody else is at home and they want some recommendations on some nice candles to burn and, and which ones are good and all that sort of thing. So I decided to do a little video about it. And then it actually, it, once I started thinking about it and planning out what I was gonna say and what I was gonna talk about, um, it, it was a lot. So it's actually, this is probably going to be a, a two or three part series, I think, um, <laughs> because they're just otherwise this video will be an hour long. So what I'm going to do today, first of all, is to just go through some candle basics. Some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today, I didn't necessarily know when I started using candles years ago. And there's one tip that I picked up this week, which blew my mind and I will be sharing that at the end of the video and there's a reason I have to leave it to the end. I'll explain that later. So stick around to the end or just skip forward to the end if you want, if you want to pick up that last tip. The first thing I want to cover off on is some tips on basic candle care. Tip number one, never, ever, ever leave a burning candle unattended. Even when you think it's safe, Sometimes a draft picks up and something nearby flies into it or whatever. You just, you just never know. So never leave a burning candle unattended. The other thing that's kind of related to that is I personally won't uh, transport a candle when it's burning. I don't think you're supposed to do that anyway, particularly if it's in glass. And I also won't put a candle too close to me. Uh, you know, so if it's on a desk, I've got a very long desk and I sit, all my computer stuff is at one end. And if I'm burning a candle at my desk, I will always have the candle at the other end of the desk and I'll explain why. A friend of mine, uh, a few years ago, her daughter was sitting at her desk and she had a candle burning. Uh, unbeknownst to her, the candle glass was faulty and when the candle heated up, it exploded. She ended up with third degree burns. It took years of rehab um, for, and she had it all over her hand and her arm and body, so it, it was bad. So um, never leave a burning candle unattended, don't put it too close to you, and never transport a candle if it's already lit. Never burn your candle all the way to the bottom. You will undoubtedly have noticed if you've bought a candle recently that the manufacturer recommends to stop burning the candle when the wax gets to a certain depth at the bottom. The reason for this, particularly if it's in glass, is that the wax absorbs the heat. So if you burn the candle too low, there may not be enough wax in the glass to actually absorb all of that excess heat and it can heat up the glass and cause the glass to crack and it, then it's a fire hazard, etc. And if you're worried about the wax and, and the wastage, I mean, the burn time of the candle is calculated based on, it takes that into account but you can scrape out, the, remove the wax and use that in a, um, a wax melt diffuser and still get the benefit of the scent of that wax if you want to. Um, or you can cut the wax up into pieces and um, wrap it in a little bit of cloth and put it in your drawers to make them smell nice. Uh, there's a whole heap of things you can do with the wax or you could just throw it out if you don't want it. The way to get the wax out of the candle, depending on how much there is, um, I think the best way is to pop it into the freezer and then it will shrink the wax and you know for 
I usually put it in for about an hour or so. I think you can do it after about half an hour and then you can sort of get the wax out um, easily that way. Now it is also best to burn your candle on a heat absorbent surface. You can just use a bit of wood or a bit of ceramic. I use just an old tile. <laughs> Not the most pretty tile in the world but still um, and it's quite thick and I have you know tested it and I, I noted that it, it doesn't get hot so um, yeah that's what I use and I often just will just test the glass so if I'm burning a candle it should be in your vicinity you should be aware of the candle uh, so if, if, if it's starting to get low, I, I might just occasionally just touch the side of the glass to make sure that it's not getting hot and then it's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you can, it's always best to put it on some kind of heat absorbent, preferably non-flammable surface. The next thing is to make sure that the wick is always trimmed. Um, this is for good wick health as well. Uh, but it also stops the flame from getting too unruly. It also stops it from smoking and creating too much soot. Well, particularly if you're using a glass candle, you won't get as much, you won't get as much or any of that black soot around the, the rim. It, it's happened to me quite a few times. You can clean it off, but uh, it, you know, it just looks a bit unsightly. If you're going to burn a candle, you want to make sure that you've got the time to allow it to burn to the edge. Usually that takes, depending on the candle, it can take, you know, uh, 45 minutes to up to three hours for that entire surface to become liquid. Uh, the reason for that is so that you don't end up with tunneling. Well, tunneling is where you burn your candle um, and if you let it go out before the melt reaches the edge of the candle, um, you can end up with a rim of wax around the outside. And that's bad for two reasons. One is that a you're reducing the burn time of your candle. The other thing is that and I'm not sure how true this is, but apparently maybe it's for in cases of very large candles or very tall candles. Uh, when you when you get that issue of tunneling, it can um, reduce the amount of access of oxygen to the wick, and um, apparently can make it harder to keep a wick. Uh, a light. I'm not entirely sure if that's true. It's just something that I've read. Uh, I've never had that issue because I don't have tunneling with my candles. So I've never really experienced that. So if you don't have enough time to keep your candle burning until the whole surface is liquid, then it is best to maybe not light it and do something else instead, like use a diffuser uh, or uh, use a wax melt. So now we move on to types of candles or candle wax. One of the more, what used to be one of the more common waxes for candles was beeswax. Um, you can still find beeswax candles now. Uh, they are expensive. The reason why beeswax was considered to be very good is because it didn't smell. So. The, one of the oldest candle, or possibly the oldest candle maker in the world, Sia Trudon, um, discovered the use of beeswax uh, for, for the use of candles back in the 1600s. And it was phenomenal because back then the materials they used to create candles um, were pretty awful and they stank and they emitted this horrible smell, um, whereas beeswax uh, not only smelled good, but it, they were aesthetically pre-pleasing and they weren't as messy, etc, etc. So the thing that people like about beeswax candles is that they tend to not be as messy because the wax is quite hard um, and they burn for longer because the, the wax is quite dense. Um, so I have one here, which is a little tiny, tiny Sia Trudon candle, um, which I believe this one is beeswax and I haven't burned it, it's still got the little cap on it. <laughs> I've had this for years, a friend of mine gave it to me and um, anyway, I've never burned it because I think it's pretty precious. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, beeswax is good because it's a dense wax, it doesn't make a mess, um, it has a pleasant smell. Uh, the burn time is generally pretty good, but the downside is, in case you hadn't heard, bees are uh, endangered. So we don't really want to be disturbing bees and disrupting their 
their home environment um, for the purpose of making candles. So uh, in recent decades, companies have switched over to using uh, different materials for making candles. Also, it's, it's less expensive to use alternate materials. Another common material for making candles is paraffin. I don't think it's as common these days as it used to be. Paraffin is not great because it's a petroleum derived material and it is carcinogenic when it burns. So really don't want to be using paraffin if we can avoid it. Some paraffin candles also, um, the wicks for some reason, sometimes contain lead. In Australia at least, that's unheard of, uh, but when you're importing cheap candles from other locations, uh, you can't be guaranteed that they don't have lead in them. So that's just something to be aware of. Another really common material for making candles is soy. So, and that's probably the most common wax uh, that's available on the market at the moment. And a lot of companies who were using other types of wax have uh, converted to soy candles as well. So the downside with soy candles is that the, the wax is a little bit softer. So the burn time is not as good relative to the beeswax, its beeswax counterpart. But the upside is that they burn cleanly, like they don't have a lot of soot. They're non-carcinogenic and they, they come from a renewable source. So soy is considered to be a vegetable based wax and there are other vegetable based waxes on the market as well. One of them being palm oil wax. Now, a lot of companies are using palm oil wax and claiming that they're um, a sustainable source and, and they burn clean and they're non-carcinogenic, which is true. But the other thing that we also know is that palm plantations are overtaking or destroying natural rainforests and obviously destroying the natural habitat of the animals that live in there, including the orangutans. So I don't recommend using palm oil candles if you can avoid it. There are other vegetable based waxes that are coming onto the market as well that I've seen recently. Uh, one is coconut wax. Um, that again, it's uh, soot free, it burns cleanly, but the downside is that it uh, is very, very soft. And so the burn time again is compromised. I've also seen some cocoa butter uh, based wax candles. Um, my understanding, I haven't bought one of those, but my understanding is that they, they're quite sweet and can be quite cloying. Uh, so I, I haven't bothered to even buy one because it's probably not the type of candle or the type of scent that I want. The other one that I've heard about recently is um, rapeseed wax. Now, I haven't actually bought one of these candles either because I haven't found one to buy it locally. Um, but my understanding is that they have the benefit of having a longer burn time than say a soy candle, but, um, and they also have really good scent throw. So I'm really, really keen to see more of those coming on the market maybe, or finding one locally that I can, can check out. So. That'll be one that I'll be looking out for in the not too distant future. When it comes to the actual scent, I do recommend trying to find out what scents are being used in the candles. Um, and most manufacturers will provide this information willingly on their websites anyway. Um, but I tend to gravitate towards ones that use um, things like essential oils, um, you know, clean products. Uh, rather than synthetic fragrances, because synthetic fragrances, depending on which ones they use, can, when they're burnt, uh, emit phthalates, which are purported to be endocrine inhibitors. I don't know if that is, I don't know how accurate that scientific data is, but I'm not really willing to take the chance, given the number of candles I burn on a weekly basis, um, to have greater exposure to something that could interfere with my hormones. So the next thing I want to talk about are wicks. 
There are two main types of wicks that you can get. In fact, there's only two wicks that I'm aware of that you can get. There's wood wicks and there's cotton wicks. So the wood wicks, in case you haven't seen one, look like this. They're usually angled and they're just a really thin slab of wood. Now these have a great benefit in that because they're wide, they disperse heat through the wax more quickly, which is a good thing if you want to try and speed up that time of getting a liquid surface on your candle. So let's say you don't necessarily want to have to burn it for up to three hours. So that is one good thing about wood wicks. The other thing I really like about wood wicks is that they crackle when they burn. So if you're sitting at your desk or something and you've got a candle burning, um, I like, especially when I'm being quiet, I like the sound of that crackling. It's really comforting and I just really like it. The downside to wood wicks though, is that they take a, just a little bit more care and attention. And I still have not mastered the technique of lighting a wood wick or trimming a wood wick. But you will note that this is angled. And, um, and I, the reason for that is that when you light a wood wick, you should tilt the candle up and then put the flame under it so that the flame is drawn up through the wood. Uh, it can take a couple of attempts to light a wood wick. They don't light as quickly and easily as a cotton wick. Um, and yeah, it, again, it may take a couple of attempts. So having an angled one like that just helps that process of drawing the flame up. The other thing is that you should keep your wood wicks trimmed quite short. So earlier I said um, that I keep my cotton wicks, I tend to keep them about a centimetre or 10 millimetres. Um, a lot of, I hear a lot of companies talking about this one eighth of an inch, which is really, really short. And with a lot of my cotton wick candles, if I was to trim them to an eighth of an inch, the wick would drown in the wax once the wax starts melting. So you need to keep them a certain length, enough length so that they stay alight, so they don't drown in the wax, but you also need to keep them short enough so that the candle, so that the flame is clean. But with wood wicks, there is another reason for the keeping them short. So this is one that I've burned previously um, and I haven't trimmed this wick yet. But you will see, let's see if I can get this to, you will see that there's lots of um, like burnt charred material on this wick here and it's just, coming, it's just coming off when I touch it. If you have too much charred material on your wood wick, it won't stay alight. So you'll be able to light it maybe, but it, the flame will die out really, really quickly. The other thing is if, if it's too tall, if the wick is too long with a wood wick, the wax, the fuel for keeping the wick alight is not actually the wood, it's the wax. So if the wood, if the wood wick is too tall or too high, um, your flame will be at the top, but the wax can't get to it. So that is why it'll keep blowing out. So that is why you need to keep them trimmed. So I tend to keep my wood wicks trimmed a lot shorter than my cotton wicks. But again, you don't want to over trim them because if you over trim them, they won't stay, they'll drown in the wax. Um, and the way to fix that is to just remove some of the wax if you can. So if you can at least keep it light enough, lit long enough to melt some of the wax and you can just draw some of the wax out when it's melted or you could scrape it out. So yeah, I think that's about it with wood wicks. Um, again, just make sure they're trimmed, not too much charred material on them and you will, it might take a bit more effort to light them. And when you light them, you should draw the flame up along the wick by tipping the candle. The next type of wick is just your standard cotton wick. Nothing too exciting. One thing I do like to keep an eye out for when I'm looking at candles, um, or one thing I take into consideration is the size of the candle and how many wicks it has. Obviously, if you have only one wick in the middle, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but 
it can you may end up with tunneling in your candle regardless of how long you burn it for. So with this candle here, it is a little bit smaller than the other candle I had, but not that much smaller. And I burned this for half a day the other day. So it was burning for at least, it was burning for about three or four hours. Um, and I'm already, I am getting tunneling around the outer edge, regardless of the fact that I burned it for a really, really long time. And the reason for that is probably because there's only one wick and it's quite a wide candle. So um, the heat is just dissipating too much by the time it gets to the edge. So unfortunately, it looks like I'm probably going to end up with a bit of tunneling on this candle, uh, regardless of how long I burn it for. Whereas if you have multiple wicks, then that is less likely to happen. Um, so you'll have a nice clean burn like I have here. The downside to multiple wicks, of course, is that it burns faster. <laughs> when I'm buying a candle, more importantly to me is the smell of the candle. So I like candles that have a really strong scent. I want a candle, if I'm lighting a candle, I want the scent to fill the room. That's the purpose of it for me. So um, that, those are things that I'll look for. So I usually will pay attention to how the candle is scented because the scent is what matters to me. So I want quality ingredients for the scent, um, quality ingredients for the wax, because I don't want to be breathing in any nasties. Um, and they're the two things that I consider to be the priority for me when I'm choosing a candle. Uh, for me, it's really all about the scent and the fragrance. Which brings me to the next point. When I burn a candle, you know, I, I buy a really nice candle and nice candles aren't cheap, by the way. Um, they are, you know, they can be pretty pricey, especially at the rate that I burn them. <laughs> One of my biggest bugbears is I burn a candle, I make a room smell really nice and then I go and blow it out and then the wick smoulders and you get all this smoke and the smoke, the smell of the smoke dissipates throughout the room and you know, all of a sudden you're going, well, now all I can smell is smoke from blowing out the candle and not the candle itself. So I learned something this week and that is how to extinguish a candle properly. And I'm so happy to be able to share this with you. And I'm sure most of you probably know this already. I did not, I didn't even think about it. And the reason why I left this to the end it was not to um, try and keep you listening to me babbling on for ages. It was actually because I only lit this candle at the very start <laughs> and I had to wait for it, the, the surface to get liquid so that I could show you this trick. So you can see my little candle burning right there and I'm breaking one of my rules of not um, holding a candle when it's burning. Thankfully it's not too hot. What you do is you take a little implement and you simply just dip the wick down into the wax, stand it back up again. How cool is that? Now, the thing about that is I was most astonished to discover that a certain candle company will sell you an implement specifically designed to do that for a cool $80 Australian. I don't know how much it goes for overseas. And look, the the way that they make their products, it's all um, it's all artisan products. But for the purposes, for something that really is just designed to dip the wick into a, into the wax so you can extinguish it, I'm happy to use pretty much anything. So I was using a little hex key that I got from I don't know a piece of furniture. Um, but you can also just use, I have used a knife as well or a fork or something like that. Something that's metal, uh, preferably, obviously, because you don't want it to burn itself. Now, there is a few reasons why this is good. Obviously, the first reason is that you don't get the smoke. So I can still smell the candle. I'm not getting any smoke. And so that hasn't spoiled the scent of the room. It doesn't cause the wick to smolder. So when you blow out a wick, it flares up and it, it smoulders um, and that actually sort of further damages the wick, I guess. Um, and the other thing is that this coats the wick with wax. Coating it with wax preserves the health of the wick, but it also just makes it easier to light the next time around. So there you have it. There is my introduction to candles for home fragrance. And uh, the next couple of videos, I will actually start going through some of these candles and talking about my favorite ones 
So uh, yeah, join me for that. But otherwise, have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.